Hello and welcome to another whiteboard training session. I'm Isaiah Henkel with Cheeky Scientist and today we're talking about the top 40 jobs for PhDs. Now we've done similar uh, whiteboard trainings before where we've talked about PhD backgrounds and how one of the biggest things that holds PhDs back from getting hired is focusing too narrow, narrowly on your background. Um, so in, in academia our backgrounds are very narrow. In some cases, only a handful of people in the world focus on that same small background. Uh, the, the job titles in the industry are not going to match those backgrounds. So no matter what PhD background you have, there are many jobs you can transition into. The problem is, is that in academia, we don't learn about these other jobs. All we learn about is, is the academic career track. At the most, you might think, okay, I know there's academic jobs and then there's industry jobs but the industry jobs are like a black box. You don't know what's available, and this is what stops most PhDs in their job search before they even get started. The truth is, though, is that there's many jobs for you, and for all types of PhDs, no matter what your background is. Now, we're gonna focus on more of STEM PhDs, but according to the National Science Foundation, STEM PhD is any PhD who uses the scientific method. So that includes social sciences, engineering, physical sciences, life sciences, even some of the humanities. Okay, so what I'm gonna to try to do is give you a, a kind of guideline of, to, how, to how to start thinking about industry jobs, which industry jobs might be right for you, what are some of the hot industry jobs right now, what are some of the key transition points in terms of careers to start your industry overall career on, uh, and then finally I'm gonna read off the top 40 industry jobs currently uh, in industry. So. One thing I want you to do though is start to realize that in industry there are these kind of buckets of types of jobs that are great transition points for PhDs. Now in the association we, tech, we, we mostly see PhDs transitioning into four key areas. Uh, into marketing roles, R&D roles of course such as research scientist, project manager and so forth. Uh, a marketing role might be a, a product manager, you might be working with a product. Um, sales, technical sales roles, these are very, very popular uh, as well. A lot of companies are hiring PhDs into sales or liaison roles. Uh, sometimes it's part sales and part applications. So applications is another type of role, application scientist. Uh, technically you could put like medical science liaison under that bucket. Uh, there are some jobs that are becoming more and more popular. There are some very hot jobs right now, data scientist. Now depending on the company, this could be under the R&D. Uh, part of the company, it could be other other arms of the company, uh, but it's actually the hottest job right now for all PhDs. A recent report came out from MassBio showing that it has increased over 200% in terms of those jobs in the marketplace. Another real hot job right now is a management consultant. Uh, it's hot because PhDs are being uh, sought after more and more for these positions uh, where they weren't previously. Same with medical science liaison. Medical science liaison positions used to only go to MDs. Now they're, they're seeking PhDs for these roles. There's a large increase there. Um, medical writing, we see a lot of PhDs going to, into medical writing too, very hot job. And regulatory affairs. So regulatory affairs is a, is a top position. Um, but if, you, if you're just trying to get your bearings on what industry jobs are available, think, start thinking about these four areas. So again, there's R&D. PhDs overall, no matter what your PhD is, getting into a research role, a research associate role in industry is still number one. Uh, it's still the most popular role to get into for all PhDs, certainly all PhDs who use the scientific method, STEM PhDs, social science PhDs, and so forth. Uh, sales, again, we talked about how more PhDs are getting into technical sales roles, liaison roles. Liaison roles are kind of in between where you may not have a a sales quota, but you might work with the sales team very closely, such as a medical science liaison. Um, and in these fall into the category very often of these application roles. They're called application roles, such as an application scientist, because you're helping a company's clients apply their instruments to their work, for example. You're helping them, uh, the clients of, let's say a company sells reagents, you're helping that company's clients use those reagents for their work. And a lot of these roles, when you're a PhD going into these roles, you're going to be working with what are called thought leaders or key opinion leaders. 
other MDs and PhDs who are using the products of that company. Um, this is, this is ve very commonly what you'll be doing in a lot of these roles. So the question becomes, how can you break down these roles into what might be right for you? And really it comes down to, what are your priorities? So some of the priorities that we've seen that PhDs consider when they're thinking about industry jobs are of course money, right? A lot of us uh, came out of academia or coming out of academia making very little, in many cases making half of what we're worth. We've talked about this on previous whiteboard training sessions. Uh, and for some people it is a, a very big priority. What Maybe you have a family or maybe you need health care, whatever it is. If it's your number one priority, the positions where you're going to make the most money are usually in the sales arena, right? The closer uh, a particular job role is to the actual transaction of money, uh, the more they'll get paid, the higher the commissions are. Um, so if it's purely money as your top priority, you want to look at sales positions. You may want to look at um, some marketing positions as well. But let's say travel. If you're willing to travel, then you'll also want to look at sales positions. A lot of sales positions are in the field. A lot of application positions are in the field, too. Um, marketing positions, R&D positions, they tend to be at headquarters. So one basic question you can ask yourself at the very beginning of finding a job that's right for you is, do I want to work at a, a headquarters, like in an office, in a location, or am I okay working in the field? Am I okay working on my own, working from home even? If you're okay working remotely, then sales and applications might be a good fit. If you want to work in an office, certainly in a lab, R&D and marketing. Uh, those are, that's a question you can ask yourself. So another priority is teaching. Do you want to teach? Do you enjoy it? Do you, want to, do you like public speaking in general? Uh, do you like getting up and presenting data? If you do, you might want to look at, again, application roles. You're going to be doing a lot more presenting if you're in an application or in a liaison role, but you'll also be doing some presenting and teaching in a marketing role, uh, maybe a little bit in a sales role and an R&D role. Sales roles will be more of a kind of a one-on-one -on -one interaction where you'll bring in the application specialist to do the, the in-depth scientific teaching. So that's another consideration. Management. Do you want to get into management quickly? If you want to get into management, usually it helps to be on site, so working at an office location at headquarters versus remotely. So you might want to look at marketing positions, especially in R&D positions. Most companies, no matter what the company is, they're run by one of these two departments. Right? All companies have a power structure, and one department is always the head overall of the power structure, and it's usually either marketing or R&D. Sometimes there's, there's a battle between both. Right, so these are considerations to, to take into account as well. And then finally, development. Do you want to get out of academia, but you want to stay close to the science and you still want to work at the bench? Do you still want to help develop a product? Then you might want to look at, uh, obviously, R&D positions, where you're going to be there developing it. Application positions, they'll take in uh, information from the field a lot and relay that information to the R&D team, to the marketing team, and help that product develop as well. Uh, marketing will help develop too, but more from uh, the marketing side, not so much from the R&D side. So these are some of the questions you can start to ask yourself to see which positions might be a good fit for you. And to keep it simple, okay, what are the, the basic transition points that are out there for PhDs? I've showed you these four. We've talked about some of the hot jobs right now for PhDs. Um, of course, research scientists, project management, uh, product management, technical sales, data scientist, management consulting, there are a lot of jobs. Now in the association, uh, we have a PhD career guide uh, that'll take you through the 40 top positions in industry right now and help you start answering some of these questions, start finding out which positions are a good fit for you. Uh, and again, the reason that we go through this in depth and the reason that I'm doing this video right now is because a lot of PhDs get stuck on not even knowing what jobs are out there. So it's a, it's a non-starter for them. So you really have to start thinking, okay, this, these are the priorities that I have. I, I don't want to travel, but I do want to teach. I'd, I'd like to continue developing. Maybe managing is not so important and money's not as important. Uh, you have to start asking yourself these questions. And then once you can answer those questions, you can start looking into all the jobs that are available. Now we do have this position guide and we do help you in the association find the pos positions that are right for you. If you're interested in joining the association, enroll, enrollment opens November 6th, so this Monday. You can go to phdsgethired.com to learn more about it. I'm going to read off the top 40 positions for you right now. 
Uh, the full guidebook is in the association along with our team who will help you find the right positions for you. Uh, but in general, there are a few key areas in industry to consider if you have a PhD. The first is in the technology industry, okay? And some of the jobs that are in the technology industry include these 11 jobs. So application scientist, product manager, market research analyst, R&D scientist, technology assessment and alliance officer, R&D project manager, technical sales specialist, capital equipment specialist, operation research analyst, manufacturing quality assurance or quality control specialist as well. These are jobs that we've seen PhDs get into time and time again. Um, so the technology industry, that's one. Now, of course, in the guidebook, we go through them in detail, um, but I'm just going to give you the titles here. And remember with job titles that there's a lot of variation. So one company might call an application scientist just an application scientist. Another company might call them a field specialist or maybe a field application specialist or a field application scientist. There's a lot of variations. There's also uh, another sector in industry under the, the financial services arm. And there's three positions here that PhDs are transitioning into frequently uh, today. Uh, quantitative, uh, quantitative analyst, uh, equity research analyst, and health economist. So maybe you've never heard of some of those job titles before. They might be a good fit. Uh, you might want to look them up. Uh, another arm is under the intellectual property uh, sector. Uh, here we have intellectual property lawyer. Of course, you need a, a, an additional degree for that um, in many cases. A patent agent or a scientific consultant. We see a lot of PhDs transitioning right into uh, these roles. Uh, technology transfer officer and patent examiner. That's a separate role and we see PhDs going into that as well. Uh, there's the writing and editing arm. Uh, so there's a marketing communication specialist, a scientific writer and technical editor. Those are interchangeable usually. Uh, scientific journalism, slightly different. A medical writer or medical communication specialist. Those are interchangeable too. Again, that's a, a, that's a growing field as well for PhDs. So we have four more categories here. Uh, information and data management. So obviously we have data scientists, which we've talked about, very hot field. A healthcare informatics technologist, or HIT, another popular role for PhDs now. Um, and business intelligent, uh, intelligence analyst, another popular role. Uh, under the clinical and medical affairs category, we have epidemiologist. We're seeing a lot of PhDs go into industry as epidemiologists. Uh, clinical trials project manager. FDA Regulatory Affairs Administrator, that's in the U.S., uh, Medical Affairs Leader or Manager, Medical Science Liaison, another hot field we talked about, uh, Clinical Research Associate, and Clinical Data Manager. Uh, under the Business and Strategy category, we have Competitive Intelligent Analyst, um, a Competitive intelli Intelligence Analyst, uh, Business Development Manager, Research Analyst in a Venture Capital Firm, and then Management Consulting. Another hot job, a popular one. Uh, but again, you really want to consider all of these job roles in light of your priorities, what you want to do. We have a lot of people who say they want to be a medical science liaison or a management consultant. Then they realize that sometimes they have to fly to a different country and stay there for two months uh, to work on a project. Or that they're traveling uh, every week for three or four days uh, each week. So you have to keep your priorities in mind when you're looking at these different positions. Uh, the last category is research policy, funding, and government. So there's science public policy advisor. We've, we've seen a lot of PhDs go into that role as well. Uh, science ethics, grant facilitator, and then uh, NIH, NSF program officer. Um, again, this is in the U.S. and it is an industry program. So hopefully this will shed some light on all of the, of the available opportunities to you as a PhD in industry. There are many jobs there. Working in industry is no longer an alternative career. Okay, academia is the alternative career. There are no jobs in academia. We've gone over the data. Um, the unemployment rates are skyrocketing for PhDs uh, because most PhDs get their PhD or in a postdoc, have no idea what they can do outside of academia. Then their lab loses funding or they graduate and they become stuck, uh, in many cases unemployed. That, we don't want that to happen to you, so realize all the opportunities that are available for you in industry. You just need to get the right training you need to find the job that's the right fit, get into a network where you can get a job referral, and get hired. So hopefully this opened your eyes to what's available for you. Hopefully it helped you kind of start to process where you might be able to transition into industry 
and wh what your priorities might be, which roles might be a good fit. If you have any questions, please post them on, a, on the comment in this post. And be sure to go to phdsgethired.com to learn more about the association, uh, which is a blueprint for helping PhDs get hired. And it's a private PhD only job referral network, the largest one in the world. Uh, this opens up this Monday, November 6th at 8 a.m.